Hello everyone, how are you all doing today? I hope that you're all doing well and that, you know, the Lord is continuing to have his hand over you, protecting you, speaking to you, just loving on you. And I hope that you guys are, you know, just leaning more on the Lord and um, relying on him, trusting him and just believing that he will bring you through whatever challenges that you are facing currently and yeah i just hope you guys are good overall um yeah i firstly want to apologize if you guys hear any background noise like cars passing by or you know a fan or an aircon I am outdoors today, um, or semi outdoors. <laughs> um, so the place I'm at, at is like next to a road. So if you guys do hear cars passing by and all of that stuff, um, yeah, I hope it won't be too much of a distraction, but I apologize for that in advance. Um, so yeah, you guys know the drill that this message is not going to be for everybody. Um, but if it is for you, you will know. And if you're still not sure whether it's for you, go back to the Lord with it and um, ask him to confirm if it's for you. Um, you guys know I always say this. When you hear a prophetic message, it should be already confirmation of what the Lord has been telling you Um in your secret place or whenever you've spent time together with him. Um, but yeah, if you still need more clarity, more insight, please go back to the Lord and yeah, always test the spirit behind every prophetic message and every prophetic voice, you know, including me. <laughs> so yeah, I'm, I'm just going to start with the prophetic message. This is a kingdom marriage um, word and uh, it's sort of going to be like a two-in-one type of message. So, um, you know, the parts that are for you, you know, receive that, chew on it, digest it, marinate, let it marinate in your mind and in your spirit and let the Lord minister more to you. And if it's not for you or the parts that aren't for you, you know, let it go. Maybe it'll be for you in the future. Um, and the Lord will remind you of this message when it is for you. But yeah, it's um, it's like a dual word, okay? So today, you know, I think I experienced like a funny side of God. <laughs> um, I don't know if you guys know this about him, but God is really funny. He has a crazy sense of humor um you know there's certain instances in the bible where you know his prophets have delivered messages and um they've said like really funny things but even besides that like in your daily life you know um or in our daily lives you know god shows himself to be somebody that has a crazy sense of humor and it always adapts to the times that we are living in you know um <laughs> so yeah like this is going to be sort of a reminder for some of you guys because i i do know that some uh, prophetic voices have delivered this word so just because it is a repetition of it it just means that the lord wants you to take heed of this word and maybe it is a rhema word for you right now um, or maybe it will be in the future but you know if he's bringing you the same message in like a different way and let's say like you're in the United States or in the UK and you're listening to this like if the Lord is repeating a message and it's coming like straight from the motherland, because you guys know I'm South African, um, yeah, like take heed to it, like take note of that because it means the Lord is speaking and he will deliver a message a number of times in a numerous amount of ways. And it just means that he wants you to take notes and pay attention and to receive the word because it is for you and um, maybe you didn't receive it 
fully in the other ways but maybe in this way it'll start to like grasp uh, properly in your spirit um, and I'm not putting myself above others by any means um, but the message that I am bringing is a prodigal returning word but the context is like within an African or South African context so um, it's just really funny guys so um yeah what happened was the Lord brought to my remembrance the Skotane era okay so this was probably between like 2010 and maybe 2017 <laughs> there was like a group of people like all over South Africa in Joburg in the townships even in some parts of Cape Town in Durban like all over South Africa there was just a huge wave of young people young adults being Skotanes and um, Skotanes were just well known for and they even had their own culture I suppose um, you could say that they were the Skruskurs or the Ama 2000s before they were Ama 2000s you know like modern teenagers so they had their own like culture and their own um fashion wave and they would wear these really colorful uh vibrant clothes with like larger than life prints and it was expensive clothes as well um and they would wear these uh well, we call them Ota Ota. So <laughs> they're like these Italian pumps and they're also quite expensive. I think at the time they would go for like 2,000 or 3,000 rand a pair just for the shoes. And then the tops, like the shirts that they would wear would be like Versace and other like famous expensive Italian brands and then of course they had to wear you know their trousers and then um yeah they just took over <laughs> South Africa um for quite a number of years and um if you're South African you know of the investigative journalist show called Third Degree um hosted by Deborah Patta and my oldest sister she used to work for uh, third degree or for ETV, which was the production company, right? So she used to work on the show and she has like a number of um, investigative documentary, journal, like documentaries um, that are on the show. And she won awards for a number of them, like CNN awards. And one of them that she won an award for was the show that they did about Skotanes. And they basically just... Um, explained what is this Kotane, what do they do, um, what's the culture or the reasoning behind it. And, um, you know, Skotanes were just known for wasteful living. Um, most of them were from impoverished backgrounds, like living in the townships. Um, so their parents, I'm just like going to throw a ballpark figure here um, most of their parents or the joint household income at the time was like maybe between like 3,000 rand to 6,000 rand um, and I think now like the current value that would be probably $200 to $400 and this is the monthly joint income of the family. So imagine living on like three to six thousand rand a month, and then your child, because they've joined this this sect or this uh, this way of life of being a skotane. Now your child is asking you to buy them a two thousand rand shirt and five thousand dollar five thousand rand shoes um and then you obviously have to have the alcohol to just like pour on the ground because money's not a thing like the whole concept of a, of iskotan is just to show that you know i'm flexing i'm I'm larger than life, money's not a thing, your expensive alcohol, like Hennessy, Verve, like whatever cognac or whiskey was like the most expensive, they would just buy bottles and bottles and 
throw that on the ground and even things like ultramel <laughs> ultramel which was um i think in township culture uh, at the time ultramel was something that was only um, consumed during special occasions so if it was somebody's birthday or maybe it's christmas time like ultramel is basically a brand of um custard um, it's like a dairy dessert, so we'll just say it's custard. Um, and you only eat it at special occasions, especially if you are from the township or from a disadvantaged background. So they would even buy things like the custard, the ultramel, and just pour it out. <laughs> I'm so sorry, guys. I'm so sorry I'm laughing, but it's just ridiculous. They would pour, like, the ultramel um, on the ground before their opponents, before their ops, to say, like, listen, ultramel is nothing. Maybe in your family you eat it at Christmas time or you eat it during the holidays or on birthdays, but look at us. We're just spilling it on the ground, spilling this Hennessy, <laughs> spilling this champagne and cognac, whatever ever and we're burning money like they would even take li like literal um authentic money not counterfeit money but real money and they would set their lighters and burn the money or they would burn some of the expensive clothing items that they had um or that their parents had worked so hard to buy um and they would always like travel in taxis and meet up at a location and the one scotani side would battle against the other scotani side and it would just be like this whole thing very wasteful, very lavish. And um, I remember when I watched the documentary that aired on Third Degree, um, my sister worked on it as well. And I just remember, like, my heart was breaking for their parents, you know, because they, they're, um, most of them are like nurses or they are domestic helpers so they'll go work at other people's houses doing the garden cleaning the house um some of them were nannies you know or they were just yeah they just worked super hard um during the month just to have enough money to make ends meet and then this child would just um say hey mom i need to buy a a um a Versace shirt uh, because there's a Scotane battle this weekend like just come up with the money and some of them would have to like take out loans and so that places the family more in debt so it was just very chaotic you guys um I'll try and link the the documentary in the description box so that you know maybe if you don't have the full picture or maybe I didn't explain it well but you can just watch a few minutes of that and you'll get where I'm coming from but the gist is that this was a phase of very wasteful and almost disgusting um unnecessary living for these kids so um where the funny part comes in, I remember during the time that it aired, this documentary went viral. <laughs> it went viral the day that it aired. And everyone on Twitter was just like laughing and um, ridiculing these kids for just being so silly and splashing money doing these rap battles or Scotane battles with their opponents. And yeah, just being unwise, you know, and so the one, I remember this one guy, um, they were busy shooting the, the, the battle between the two rival groups, and this one guy, okay, you need to understand that <laughs> in township culture, like, gold teeth is a huge thing, um, and if you go to my native province of KwaZulu-Natal, specifically Durban, Everyone in Durban has a gold tooth. Well, not everyone, but like 90% of the population has gold teeth, silver teeth. Um, and they have like really elaborate designs. Some of them are like stars or you can go to your dentist and ask for a dolphin or a dollar sign, whatever you want. So it was just very 
very popular and prominent at that time. So the guy in the documentary, um, the third degree documentary, he's now trying to drop bars for his opponents, his rival team. And um, he had a he had two prominent gold teeth. So <laughs> I'm so sorry, guys. It's so silly. Oh, my gosh. <clears throat> And this is like back in, I think it's 2016 or 20, no, before that, 2015 probably, um, or maybe 2014. So um, he now says, he's now flexing about his gold teeth. Um, and he's like, um, okay, I'm just going to say it in Zulu and then I'm going to translate it. He says, Bebe tingi useless, kota ngi no you, and ngi fage no fool. So, gushugu tingi useful. And <laughs> and basically what that means, oh, there's an ambulance. Okay. So, basically what that, let me just say it across by. Okay, so basically what that means translated is they said that I was useless, but little did they know that I've got a U-shaped gold tooth and I've got a full gold tooth. So it means that I'm useful. (laughs) I'm so sorry. Wow. Like, when I heard that and then I was reading the tweets about it, I was just like, you know, when you hear something that is so silly (laughs) and so nonsensical, like, and then you have to process it because, like, you can't believe that that actually came out of somebody's mouth and that is an actual bar or a diss or a flex that they were dropping. So at the time I was like, wow, like these guys are so silly, but I had a really good laugh about it. And I sent my, my sister an email. I was like, girl, props to you and (laughs) the production team and Deborah Patter, who was the, the host of the show. And she was very, um, very well known or infamous for just being a no nonsense type of a journalist and she wouldn't let any issue or any problematic person go like over the hook or whatever off the hook rather so I sent my sister an email I was like oh my gosh like props to you guys this was such an awesome documentary um I really hope that it 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 stays like on top that it's uh, that the AR ratings are high and I knew that they were going to be high because like literally everyone on Twitter was tweeting about um, this uh, documentary about the Scotanes. so I forgot about it for many years right um, just going through life um, I accepted Jesus Christ and I started building my relationship with him and so recently <laughs> God brought that to my attention, like that that flex or that bar that 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 young Scotane was dropping to his <laughs> his opponents, and so I was like, Lord, why are you bringing this to my attention? Like, yes, it was funny, but like, why? Like, what's your reasoning? And so I pondered on it and I continued to pray, like, Lord, give me like the revelation that you want or what you want to speak to me. And then um, the next morning, God brought it all together so beautifully. And um, (laughs) the reason he reminded me about the, uh, they thought I was useless, but now I'm useful because I've got a U-shaped tooth and a full-shaped gold tooth. Um, It mimics Philemon chapter 1 verse 11 um so maybe if you've been seeing 111 and you are believing for uh, marriage restoration or reconciliation with you and your kingdom spouse then this might be for you and we know that in Philemon chapter 1 verse 11 it says um formally <laughs> God is so funny you guys 
wow i still can't believe it <clears throat> but anyway it says uh philemon 1 verse 11 formerly he was useless to you <laughs> But now he has become useful both to you and to me. So I was like, oh my gosh, okay, okay. And bear in mind, guys, I had read um, the book of Philemon a couple of times before, um, especially uh, in this kingdom marriage journey or believing for a kingdom spouse. And I, you know, I stood on it. I prayed about it for some time, but you know, recently now the Lord bringing the whole Skotane flexing situation to me. I was like, oh my gosh, like God just brings fresh revelation every time. And he's even doing it in such a humorous way. And I'm sorry, like if you're listening to this and you're just like, okay, I don't get why it's so funny, but I hope that God will, will show you the humor in it. But, um, yeah, I was just like, God, you're so amazing. Cause you're even like bringing these revelations or these reminders, um, of what you are doing in fresh, relevant, um, amazing and vibrant ways. Like who knew that God would use a, a joke, you know? <laughs> a joke to bring about this reminder or this revelation so yeah um and we know that uh it also like this whole skotani thing uh it it's basically about wasteful living because you know they would just like burn literal money notes and um burn their expensive clothes and you know drain their parents pockets just to just to live this wasteful lifestyle, you know, popping bottles, pouring it on the ground, um, and flexing on their rivals or ops. So, um, we know that the, 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 uh, the parable of the prodigal son is basically about a man who had two sons and the one son said, no, give me my inheritance now, uh, before you've died so that I can, live my best life and the father obliges you know he gives him his share of the inheritance and the son goes and he lives his best life spending money on prostitutes and just doing the most you know <laughs> and then the money runs out and the land that he is in the foreign land is struck by a famine and he comes to his senses while well, he goes seeking a job and then somebody gives him a job feeding the pigs um and then he comes to his senses and he's like oh you know um this is not this is not it you know at my father's house uh, the slaves eat even better than this, you know, I'm sure if I go back and I repent and ask for forgiveness, maybe my father will even, um, allow me to become like a slave or a servant in his house. Um, and then the son goes back home and before the son even got back home, I think he was quite a distance off, but the father kept on watching, um, out the door I think he must have been just yearning for his son or he just loved him so much that he had hope that the son would return. And before the son even reaches home, the father meets him halfway and he rejoices. He gives the son a big kiss and he tells his servants, hey, um, get him cleaned up, put on the best robe, um, slaughter the best calf or cow and let's have a feast because the son that I thought was dead, um, the one who was lost, you know, he has now returned and he's here with us. So let's celebrate. So yeah, that, that parable can be found in Luke chapter 15. So, um, God just brought this about in, in such a, a powerful way. And, you know, when I was uh, recording this, the 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 song that was playing, well, the time was 14.14. Let me just start there. The time was 14.14, like 14 minutes past two in the afternoon. And I'll try and post the screenshots here. And then the song that was playing was 
um, Super Love by Tanache, but it was near the end of the song. And then you guys know on Spotify, it transitions, especially if you're using the, the DJ thing. Um, so it transitioned to to the song Tell You Something by Alicia Keys. And so I took a screenshot of that as well. And the when I took the screenshot of the Alicia Keys song, the song was at the 2 minutes 20 second mark. And the length of the song is 4 minutes and 4 seconds. Okay. So, um, yeah, if you're trusting the Lord for the return of your prodigal spouse um, or the restoration of your marriage with your prodigal spouse, then do listen up, okay? So I looked up the numbers 14, 14, 226, which was the the time that I took the, the screenshot, and then the length of the song, which is 404. I looked up these numbers, excuse me, in the Strong's Concordance. Okay, so 1414 in the Strong's Greek concordance is dunateo, which means to be able, to be powerful, and the context that it's used in is I am powerful, I am able, I am mighty. So the Lord is saying here that he is able to perform this restoration he is powerful the lord is the most powerful being in the whole entire universe you know um there's nobody that compares to him um you guys know like looking back on your life journey the lord has brought you through some pretty hectic and impossible situations and maybe there were times where your back was against the wall or the enemy was really closing in on you you know people were attacking you um maybe you could have faced possible prison time or even like in a court case where the odds were against you but the lord showed himself mighty and um powerful on your behalf you know you really sook him you trusted in him and you cried out to him for help and the lord proved himself so this is the lord saying that just as he was faithful to you and he proved himself powerful mighty and able back then um he's still gonna do it now like and to you, it might seem like, you know, believing God for marriage is like, uh, it's like insignificant or something. But the Lord really cares deeply about each and every one of us. And he cares about the things that hurt us and the things that would make us happy. And obviously the things that will fulfill his will and purpose here on earth so in the same way that he was powerful and able and he showed himself mighty before continue to believe that he will continue to be that same powerful mighty more than capable God and he will bring this restoration and this union it will come to pass in his timing okay so that's the number 1414 just keep on believing in the Lord because he really is powerful and when it does come together you know there's you're not going to be able to give credit (laughs) to anyone else but the Lord, okay? Because for some of you, your situation looks really dead. Like your kingdom spouse might just be like living their best life and maybe they're ignoring you or they just seem like they're on another path or another journey and things just look dead. Like there's no love there. Well, obviously there is, but it's just like dormant, you know, things from the outside look as if it's impossible to, to reconcile or to get back together. But you're really going to, God is going to bring you through this and you're really going to sit back and reflect on this miracle of God. And you're going to say, it couldn't have been anyone else, but God, (laughs) you know, um, and God is so faithful and so loving and, these these unions are going to be a testament to the world, right, about his agape love and his strength, his power, and, yeah, just like how he feels about humanity, right? So even though people around you may be like, oh, move on, like, 
this relationship is dead. Like God is going to bring it to life. He's going to do a miracle um, for you and your kingdom spouse. Okay. And we're all at different stages in this whole journey. So once again, take it back to the Lord. Ask if this is for you now or if it's for you in the future. Um, but yeah, just pray about it, right? But yeah, God is powerful. He's mighty. He's faithful and he's going to do it. So the Lord is saying, trust me, keep believing, um, keep praying and standing in the gap and just believe that I'm, I'm, I'm able to do this. Like I am able, maybe you've been disappointed before, um, and you've experienced like a false start with you and your person, but the Lord is saying, trust me, like it is not over. Okay. Um, so yeah. And then the number two, two, six in the Strong's Greek concordance is aletheuio, which means to say something, to speak the truth, to do the truth and to maintain the truth. Okay. Um, and this was the the time, the time stamp of when I took the screenshot of Alicia Keys tell you something. So it literally correlates with one another. Okay. Because two to six means to say something. And then the song is called, I want to tell you something. Okay. (laughs) Um, And then there's that theme of like truth. So when your kingdom spouse comes to you, they are going to um, like if this word is for you, when they return to you, they are going to speak their truth and they're going to speak whatever is in their heart. Okay. So the Lord wants you to be expectant and also to be patient because maybe some of the things that they're going to say are not going to be pleasant to hear. Okay. (laughs) Um, maybe they're going to be telling you about like things that they've done or people they've dealt with or how they felt. And maybe it's going to rub you up the wrong way, but this is their truth. And the Lord is also going to give you an opportunity to speak your truth, which some of it might not be good for them to hear, but let the truth prevail, okay? And obviously the Lord is going to bring them forward um, to do the truth as well. So they're going to be, you know, giving confessions and expressing their love for you and the vision that the Lord has given them, okay? Because now um, they are, they've repented to the Lord, they've returned to him and, um, they they're rebuilding that that um that relationship that they've had with the Lord or that they wanted to have with the Lord. So the Lord has revealed the truth to them. He has unveiled the or taken the scales off their eyes and they see the truth of everything. And now they are willing um to fulfill God's purpose and to do the truth and to maintain the truth of the Lord. Okay. So it's not just about their feelings, um, and their emotions, but it's about the Lord now. Okay. So they're going to come back wanting to say something, to tell you the truth about how they feel and, and the revelations that the Lord has given them. And they're going to live in the truth of Jesus Christ. Okay. And then the next number is 404, which was the length of the song, four minutes and four seconds. And in the Strong's Hebrew concordance, um, 404 is a cup or a cuff, and it means to press, to urge, to have urgency. So the Lord is definitely pressing it on their hearts, and he's been doing this for a while Um to press it on their hearts so that they can come through, um, come forward to you and express how they feel and to reconcile with you. Okay. The Lord has been definitely like giving them that that sense of urgency you know if you've been hearing or seeing rather um one two three and three two one there is a sense of urgency in the spirit and the lord has dispatched angels to to tell them like hey go to your husband or go to your wife that's been standing for you and tell them like reconcile make things right and start to live in this promise, you know? So yeah, those are the numbers that the Lord gave me. And, um, I also want to mention here that throughout this week, 
um, this song, there's a song that's just been playing in my spirit um, from the Prince of Egypt. And it's the song where, sorry, I just need to drink water quickly. So yeah, guys, um, the song is from the movie The Prince of Egypt, um, the animated version. And it's the part where, you know, the, the Israelites, they are busy crossing through the, the Red Sea. Um, God had done a miraculous wonder for them. And he told Moses, put your staff in the water and I will separate the waters. I'll cause a, a strong easterly wind to blow. And there's going to be a wall of water between um the, uh, there's going to be a wall of water <laughs> on either side of you. So as they travel along, you know, it's dark and scary. But along the way, uh, I think it's Miriam and Zipporah. They start singing When You Believe uh, in the movie. You know that song? There can be miracles when you believe. Yeah, so they start singing that song. And then in the middle of that song, there's a little girl and the other the other children join in um and she starts singing a hebrew praise song and i can only remember like the one line which is the line that's been playing in my spirit this whole week you know um and it says well that line says ashira al adonai gigo gaha um which which means i will sing to the lord for he has triumphed gloriously and the lord just wants me to read that little hebrew verse um i'm not gonna read it in hebrew because i feel like i already (laughs) butchered that that first hebrew part but she says um i will sing to the lord for he has triumphed gloriously i will sing to the lord for he has triumphed gloriously who is like you in the heavens O lord who is like you in uh, glorious in holiness in mercifulness you led your children that you had redeemed i will sing i will sing i will sing which is ashira 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 and then they like the tempo picks up and you know even though the israelites in the movie had been traveling for a really long time just crossing over into their promised land but they somehow start to praise the lord even while they are crossing over and waiting to get to the other side so the lord is saying with this you know and it's such a joyful song like when you hear it um and i'll post it in the description box uh below um when you hear it you just can't help but sing along and dance and Ugh, it just gives you shivers, you know, and the fact that a young child or young children are leading the song and then the adults grow up and it's this powerful chorus just of praise, thanksgiving, recognizing the Lord's sovereignty, his power and his mercifulness in leading them out of Egypt and still delivering them to the other side, which is their promised land. It's just so powerful, you guys. So the Lord is saying here that, um, you know, get into that spirit of praise (laughs) Um, while he is still working out the little kinks and, um, you know, setting things together and positioning people and things and opportunities for you and your kingdom spouse, just praise him. Okay. Recognize what the Lord has already done for you in the past and just notify him, like show him that you recognize that he is going to be victorious, you know, um, the first number 1414 which is to be able to be powerful um and to be mighty which is god referring to himself um show the lord that you really believe that he is mighty that he is able to do this thing and that he is 
that he is powerful, okay, that he is able to redeem you and your kingdom spouse or you or your kingdom spouse, you know, and that even through this whole process, the Lord has still been good to you. He's still shown you grace, mercy, favor, and he's fought on your behalf. He has dispatched angels to fight on your behalf and to fight for your kingdom spouse, right? So the Lord is just saying, praise him. Praise him, praise him, praise him. Sing, even if you're not a good singer like me, <laughs> okay? I'm the worst singer in the whole entire world, but um, I still sing to the Lord, you know? Um, I still give him my adoration, my devotion, my praise. And hopefully to the Lord, it sounds good, you know? Hopefully our praises, you know, when we, when we sing worship songs to the Lord, the world can say, oh, you're such a bad singer or whatever. But like to the Lord, it is a sweet, um, a sweet, sweet sound and a sweet fragrance to him. OK, so worship him, praise him and sing, um, sing of the good things that he has done. OK, and be expectant that the Lord is actually going to do this. OK, because, yeah, like he's he's in the midst of this whole thing and he's going to make sure that his promise to you and to your kingdom spouse um, is fulfilled, okay? So um, the Lord just also wants me to read the lyrics of Tell You Something by Alicia Keys. So I'm just going to do that now. Let me just pull up the lyrics for you guys. And this is how, you know, if this word is for you, this is how your kingdom spouse has been feeling or how they're feeling currently, okay? So they need to like... <laughs> They need to make a move very quickly. Like the urgency is there. God has been pressing it on them. And um, yeah, like let's just get into it, okay? Sorry, guys, I forgot to mention that the the song um, from the Prince of Egypt is loosely based on Exodus chapter 15, verse 1 to 21. So um, you guys can go read that uh, for yourselves. Or maybe the Lord has been leading you to that scripture. So maybe this is confirmation for you. But yeah, um, that was just a scriptural reference to excuse me, the song in the Prince of Egypt. Okay. So now let's go ahead and read, tell you something by Alicia Keys. And this is the lyrical message. All right. Um, it says, get so caught up every day, trying to keep it all together while the time just slips away. See, I know nothing lasts forever. Imagine there was no tomorrow. Imagine that I couldn't see your face. There'd be no limit to my sorrow. So all I can say. So here, you know, your kingdom spouse has been avoiding <laughs> this conversation. <laughs> They've sort of been running away from it. But the Lord has been, you know, to, uh, sorry, 404, pressing them, urging them to come and talk to you. But they've been fear full of fear and doubt and they have that fear of rejection and wondering okay if I go to my kingdom husband or my kingdom wife that's been standing for me um are they going to accept me back like what's going to happen so they've just been having so many thoughts going through their heads and some of them have even been masking this um through keeping themselves occupied um the song said i get so caught up every day trying to keep it all together so they've been trying to preoccupy themselves with work with um other projects that they've been doing and also just with you know things of the lord you know maybe the lord has called them to isolation so that he can minister to them and um speak to them about the situation and tell them what to do so they've just been very consumed but even with that with that they know that time is ticking 
um, there's an urgency and they can't let this opportunity pass them by because not only is the Lord waiting for them to make a move and, and speak to you, but you've also been waiting for them, okay? Um, I know a lot of you have been standing for a number of years, okay, and you've been possibly disappointed before with the false starts and just like interference from the enemy witchcraft um the counterfeits all of that stuff so you've been hurt before but just be reassured that when they do come back and if this word is for you please take it back to the lord um that this is going to be it okay there's no false starts your kingdom spouse is coming to tell you the truth okay and they're not going to um they're not going to hesitate any longer okay and they're just thinking about like what the world and life would be without you um a lot of you guys you know you're dealing with prodigals right so you guys know each other from a long way back, okay? <laughs> um, maybe you guys were friends before, or you dated before, you might have children together, or you may have even been married and um, separated or divorced. So they know you and you know them for quite some time. So now they're imagining like what a world without you looks like and it brings them heartbreak it brings them sorrow they just can't even fathom doing life without you okay so the chorus says i want to tell you something give you something show you in so many ways because it would all mean nothing if i don't say something before it all goes away I don't want to wait to bring you flowers or waste another hour, let alone another day. I'm going to tell you something, show you something, won't wait till it's too late. And then it goes, I can't wait, I can't wait, I can't wait, I, w I don't want to wait. Um, so your kingdom spouse is feeling this need to tell you what is on their heart, um, to tell you what how they feel about you, what they've gone through, what the Lord has been ministering to them, and um, they can't wait, okay? Um, but we know that this is a big decision for them. It's a big leap of faith. Um, if you guys have also been hearing the song Unthinkable by Alicia Keys, um, then yeah, this is probably a, a word for you because they they have to like take a big risk and they don't know if it's going to end in tears of joy or just end in tears like sadness but um yeah they've been thinking very carefully about this they've been weighing the pros and the cons and they've also just been waiting for the perfect moment to come to you remember everything has to be in alignment according to god and when god gives them the green light they will make the move and come to you so a lot of you guys you know expect a knock on your door if your kingdom spouse knows where you live um expect a video call or a facetime expect a letter or a text message or an email um but yeah they're gonna come and communicate with you soon okay um and yeah where it says i want to tell you something give you something some of them are gonna come bearing gifts for you they may not be a woman or a man of too many words so you know look <laughs> look at their actions when they do come forward because that is going to be their um their way of expressing how they feel so they'll come with gifts if they can't you know speak in full what they've been feeling and um expressing to you how much they love you okay so yeah um the second verse says just a simple conversation just a moment is all it takes i want to be there just to listen and i don't want to hesitate okay so they know that you guys need to have a conversation okay and um i don't know if the lord has been having you watch 
uh, I can't remember what network it's on, but there is like there was a series called The Conversation, and I think Ray J and Princess Love from Love and Hip Hop, as well as um, uh, I think Angela White, aka Black China, and her mother, they were also on it. Um, but yeah, it was basically a a show about you know two parties having a conversation speaking their truths um talking about like some uncomfortable things that they had gone through in their relationship and just trying to find a resolution so if the lord has been showing you that or he's just been telling you that you need to have an uncomfortable conversation then be prepared for that and your kingdom spouse already knows that this might be an uncomfortable and somewhat awkward conversation but they are they want to speak to you and speak their truth but they also um the lord has been telling them that they must also listen to you and your truth okay so it's going to be a give and take um it's going to be you guys bouncing off of each other and they're not going to be selfish in this instance they're going to listen to you and your concerns your hurts and um your truth as well okay so yeah that's once again signifying i think a change of heart because maybe before they were very prideful arrogant selfish self-righteous and just thinking about self 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 they made themselves like a god a mini god in their lives which we know that is from the enemy um the bible and god always urges us to love others and to humble ourselves to not have pride Um, but they were living in that state before so now they've had a change of heart they've repented the Lord has humbled them and they are now going to be more compassionate more empathetic towards you and they're going to listen to how you feel as well okay um yeah And then it goes back again to the pre-chorus. Imagine there was no tomorrow. Imagine that I couldn't see your face. There'd be no limit to my sorrow because there is nothing that can fill the space. Oh, did I put it off for too long? I didn't say all that I need to say. I want to take the time to right the wrongs before we get to that place. So here your kingdom spouse is realizing that they may have put things off for way too long you know the lord has probably been unctioning them for a good few months to come forward and communicate with you but they've been putting it off trying to mask their feelings trying to use work um, and other activities as a crutch to avoid <laughs> to avoid taking this leap of faith okay but now they they're asking themselves like oh maybe I put it off for too long maybe he or she has moved on already um and yeah they want to take the time to actually right their wrongs because the Lord has shown them where they've gone wrong where they have mistreated you where they didn't treat you with um compassion and love and understanding and they want to actually be intentional about righting their wrongs so you know, once again, for some of you, um, if this word is for you, the the proposal, the marriage isn't going to happen right off the bat, um, but the reconciliation is coming soon. The restoration is coming soon. And we know that reconciliation and restoration is a process. And um, a part of that process is them actually showing you that they that they have corrected that behavior and that they are willing to make things right they are going to make it up to you and make sure that you are happy okay um yeah and then the chorus again i want to tell you something give you something show you in so many ways because it would all mean nothing if i don't say something before it all goes away don't want to wait to bring you flowers waste another hour let alone another day i'm gonna tell you something show you something won't wait till it's too late and then the bridge says just lean on my shoulder it's not over till it's over 
don't worry about it because I'm going to make sure our bond gets stronger. Yeah, I don't want to wait until the storm and something's wrong and now you're gone and I can't find you. So your kingdom spouse is going to be a support system for you. Um, for a lot of you guys, the the relationship was... I could say like emotionally lacking and even spiritually lacking. You were the one who had to fight the spiritual warfare. You were the one who had to bear the the burden of carrying everything by yourself. Um, And you didn't have much support from them. They were like emotionally distant. They didn't want to engage with you and... um, really take time to actually figure out what your needs were in the relationship but now um they're going to be a sorry a very supportive partner um don't be surprised if you start seeing them speak more kindly to you asking you how your day was um if everything is okay um and just being more aware of your feelings and being empathetic and sympathetic towards you because that is a start you know this is a whole process that they're going through and it's a big decision but it's going to take some time so be patient with them um, accept them with love and grace and just you know be thankful for what the Lord is doing the Lord has reformed their heart he's taken their heart of stone and turned it into a heart of flesh so that they can love you better and be a better partner to you okay so um yeah you can lean on their shoulder now (laughs) they're going to be there to catch you and just make sure that you're okay all right so it goes to the chorus once again um and yeah that's that's the the end of the song i think the end of the song is just a repetition of um i i can't wait i can't wait i won't wait i don't want to wait i won't wait till it's too late i can't wait i can't wait i won't wait i don't want to wait and it just repeats and repeats so your kingdom spouse is not going to wait much longer they are coming and be expectant okay so guys remember praise the lord in advance um continue to seek him and pray that the lord just does away with all the fear the discouragement pray that the lord shuts the mouths of the enemy shuts the mouths of those lions that are trying to devour your spouse um and yeah pray that the lord um continues to dispatch more angels to speak to your to your kingdom spouse to help them you know wherever they are whatever they are thinking and whatever they're facing ask the lord to personally minister to your kingdom spouse and for some of you the lord is going to use you okay so just be aware of that but just fight against the enemy rebuke cancel nullify everything that he is trying to do in this hour to try and um to try and what's the word like mess up the plan um to try and like cause you to go in another direction and cause your spouse to go in another direction rebuke it cancel it nullify it ask the lord to crush it with his mighty right arm in the mighty name of jesus we know that every altar every curse every um spell every work and deception of the enemy can only be broken by the power of um our heavenly father jehovah yahweh adonai and jesus christ and the holy spirit so just continue to rely on him because it's only through him that this whole reconciliation reunion um and marriage is going to be possible so yeah guys the lord is fighting for you the lord has put an urgency on your kingdom spouse's heart and um it's going to be coming very soon so i just want to close out guys by reading um philemon chapter 1 verse 11 to I think it's verse verse 18. Okay, so it says, Formerly, this is Philemon, uh, sorry, yeah, it's Paul talking to Philemon about 
Onesimus, who was a runaway slave who did some bad things, um, but they were together in prison, and now he's sending Onesimus back. Um, so, yeah, your prodigal is coming back, okay? And this is the Lord speaking to you. He says, formerly he was useless to you, but now he has become useful both to you and to me. Verse 12, I'm sending him who is my very heart back to you. I would have liked to keep him with me so that he could take your place in helping me while I am in chains for the gospel. But I did not want to do anything without your consent so that any favor you do would not seem forced but would be voluntary. Perhaps the reason he was separated from you for a while, for a little while, sorry, was that you might have him back forever. No longer as a slave, but better than a slave, as a dear brother. He is very dear to me, but even dearer to you, both as a fellow man and as a brother in the Lord. Verse 17. So if you consider me a partner, welcome him as you would welcome me. If he has done anything, if he has done you any wrong or owes you anything, charge it back to me. Okay, so that's the Lord once again just saying that he's sending your prodigal spouse back and um, whatever offense they've caused, whatever they've done that um, has hurt you, um, charge it back to the Lord. You know, the Lord will repay you. And the Lord is actually giving, uh, I think it's called reparations um, to a lot of you guys. He's just like making up for the parts or the times when your kingdom spouse fell short, okay? But the Lord is sending them back. And he also says, you know, Paul says that Onesimus is his very own heart. So um, the Lord is saying that even though your kingdom spouse ran away from him and ran away from you and they behaved badly, they did some terrible things, but he still loves them and he still considers them um, their own son or daughter. So he's sending them back and he, he needs you to take good care of them and to accept them with love, with grace. Um, with forgiveness and if you still are feeling you know bitter in some way ask the Lord to work on your heart okay um, to break away that that hard heart of stone okay because he needs you to accept them they need to feel your love and your forgiveness and you can't fake it you guys so be sincere in everything all right so that's the end of the word for today I hope you guys enjoyed it and thank you for listening up to this point i know it was quite lengthy but yeah i had to give everything the way that the lord gave it to me um but yeah please do like and comment um or email me if you're too shy to and if you feel led to so in the ministry my details will be below and i'll link all the the videos and documentaries in the in the description box so yeah guys thank you so much for staying with me up to this point i pray that this really helped you and gave you clarity and insight and encouragement be expectant the lord is working your spouses are coming back um if this is for you and um yeah just praise the lord praise the lord in advance praise him and just thank him for what he has done and what he is doing and what he is about to do because he's working guys like our god is amazing so yeah guys i'll see you guys in the next video and i hope you have a beautiful week ahead um please be safe and know that i'm praying for all of you and i love you guys so much i'll see you next time love you bye Mwah.